Hello there and welcome to the Fall Acrylic Portrait Painting Challenge Masterclass, lesson number two, part two, sketching your portrait for accurate proportions and likeness. Hey, glad you're here and looking forward to helping you finish the sketch. Um, in the last lesson, we kind of got the loose outline, did some detail on her hands, kind of got carried away with that part of the process, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to be diving into the facial features right now, starting very, very loosely, just getting the overall outline and then refining those details and forms as we go along. But I would love to have you join the Portrait Painting Challenge if you haven't already done so. Uh, it is free to join. Um, you can do that at realisticacrylic.com, fall-acrylic-portrait-painting-challenge. When you join, I will send you the welcome kit, and that includes a gridded reference photo, so you can get the accurate proportions and paint along with us with confidence. Uh, you'll get the supplies list, so you know exactly what you need to paint with us. Uh, you'll also get the palette layout guide to keep your colors from getting muddy as you're mixing uh, for skin tones and other things in the portrait. So go ahead and join for free. It does include the first two lessons uh, for free. And then I have paid lessons as well at Realistic Acrylic Portrait School, uh, where we're gonna take this portrait to completion. Um, anyway, so glad to have you here. Uh, so why don't you go ahead and grab your colored pencil and your eraser, get up next to your easel, maybe with a cup of coffee or some hot tea, and we're gonna dive right into the process. And before I start, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask a word of blessing on this class. So, Father, I ask a blessing on this class today. I do need your help to be able to do this. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you'd help me to be able to teach this part of the process. And I pray for the students, they'd be able to sketch with confidence, get the accurate proportions and likeness. Uh, so bless this class, Lord, and uh, bless the students enable them to do a portrait they can be proud of. They'd use the talent you've given them, Lord, um, and be able to bless the people around them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's dive into, like I said, the facial features. We have everything outlined. We have the contour of her face. That's the most important thing. And then we're gonna get that started. I'm just gonna get a sip of water here before we dive in. Okay, so we want to start in the right place and we're looking at kind of counting from the top. I'm gonna to start with her eyebrows and we're counting down one, two, three, four, five, six. So on that sixth square, um, that would be where we start one, two, three, four, five, six, and it's gonna be you know, from the left, if we just want to count that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can kind of see even without counting, but I'm just kind of doing that just to be double sure and to help you make sure that you're on track as well. Um, so we have the eyebrows starting up below the line, or actually I should say above that um, horizontal uh, grid line. And then the bottom part does go a little bit below the line. So we have the bottom line and the top line. There's a little bit of thickness to it. Let's zoom in a little bit. And so we're looking at the line kind of coming down at this point right here. Now our eyebrows are actually going pretty far. They're going to go in about a third of the way from this vertical running line right here. They dip down a little bit, and again, there's a little bit of a thickness to them. So maybe something like that. And instead of sketching in like all the hairs, I want you just to see this whole eyebrow is kind of a mass and a shape, and so just kind of do that. Now you can fill it in a little bit, and it is good to fill it in. Let's just kind of get that loose form for now. Uh, the other eyebrow has a different shape. So we've got basically a, let me just show you here. 
I'll flip this over. Um, you've got a round form right here on the first one. And the next one has kind of a skinny form, but more of a pointed edge. And the reason it has a pointed edge on uh, the eye eyebrow on the right is because you're seeing it in perspective. You're seeing it foreshortened as it's hitting this other contour of her face. Um, and as the arch of her eyebrow ridge comes together at a point. So we do want to get that portrayed. It does come out to about the halfway point. Now the eyebrow comes up here and it's going to basically correspond to that little bump we have there. It goes just below this horizontal grid line. And I might have exa I probably exaggerated this. Yes, I did. I'm going to need to erase that just a bit. This uh, edge here doesn't go down quite as far. It goes down to about there. So the bottom part of the eyebrow goes to maybe about yeah, a third of the way down on these horizontal grid lines. All right, now let's uh, block in the form of the eye. It's always good to keep your colored pencil sharp, and I'm using, again, a dark umber colored pencil. Um, so the eye is going to kind of start right here. There's a little bit of a curvature now. There's a couple different areas that are important. The bottom angle where it meets this part of the grid and then the top part where it meets the other. And it's gonna be about a third of the way between these horizontal grid lines. And then it's going to be just at about the halfway mark between you know, these two grid lines here. It does come out a little bit. Just like that, and then the round part is going to go in a little bit, but let's just kind of get the loose form and go to the next one. All right, now we have the, we're sketching part of the nose. Now it's harder to see this line, but if you look at the reference photo, there's a difference in the value. So you have to take the realism in a sense and make it more abstract or rather deconstruct the realism and reconstruct it again. In other words, in your reference photo, you're going to see a difference in the value. That's a difference between the light and the darkness. You can see the nose is a little bit lighter, the light's shining on it. And so uh, where that difference occurs right there, that's where we're gonna plot out a line and get that contour coming down from the eyebrow onto the top of the nose. And I wanna make sure that I have this line plotted out. It's not quite at the halfway point. It's a little less than the halfway point. It's very hard to see the value here, so it's hard to tell where that nose comes out. But we're just gonna need to sketch something anyway even though it's so hard to see that distinction. I'm going to have it meet kind of at these, the intersection of the vertical and horizontal grid line. And then I'm going to bring this down like that. So we have that bottom curve of the nose. And then we've got this little area right here. All right, so this is the nostril, and that is going to basically hit at about the third, about a third of the way on this uh, between these two grid lines here. I want to make sure I don't have it going too far to the left. It really starts to the right. Oh, and I can see actually her nose does need to come out just a little more to the right 
it does go past the grid line. I can see it ever so slightly, ever so slightly. It does need to come out just a bit more like that. Now the nostril then is going to go a little bit past the halfway point. It's important to make sure that you don't put that nostril in the middle. You're going to you're going to inevitably want to put this nostril smack dab in the middle of these two grid lines. So for example, if you had the two grid lines here, here's your square. You're going to be tempted to put that nostril right in the middle. Don't don't do that because it's it's actually um, lower than the middle. And the reason we we inevitably put things in the center because we always want to <clears throat> basically line things up symmetrically and, and that's not the best way to go. We want to look at what we see in the reference photo and capture that as accurately as we can. All right, so the grid line is a little bit below the halfway point. <clears throat> and I want to make sure I don't have it too thick. I'm just going to race away a little bit. And there's a couple of little shapes. There's a round shape here, there's another shape there, but let me just block this in loose before I get carried away here. It's easy to get carried away with the detail. Okay, we're just going to keep this going just to make sure that I have it roughly where it should go. Now let's block in the other eye before I get carried away down to the rest of the face. And we've got that form. All right, and then let's block in the mouth. So we start with the lip area. And the top part of the lip is going to be very important, that, that particular shape. And that goes down to about a little bit above the halfway point. Now there's this Cupid's bow, that's a little divot there. And we want to get that little divot in there where it flows from the nostril. So that, that'll be an important shape to capture. And I think I might have the nostril just a bit too low. You can either use battery operated eraser or you can use just a regular eraser as well. But the battery operated one will give you a little more precision. I just want to make sure this is not too low. Okay, so we have that little divot and it's slightly above the halfway point. There's a round part of the lip here, comes out to about there. Now we have, let's just finish this form for the top part of the lip and it's going to go at the intersection of these grid lines here. So that's where that's going to, to meet. This is the end of her mouth. It's going to curve up ever so slightly. And then we've got that form here. That's the bottom part of her lip. And the end of it comes out to about a third of the way from the edge of the grid line. So I need to bring it out just a little bit more. Then we have the small opening and that goes just a little bit below the horizontally running grid line. Okay, and then we have the bottom part of the lip. We want to pay attention to that form and that goes maybe about around the halfway mark here. And then the lip angle here is important that has just a slight bit of a curve to it and then it flows around 
So it's something like that. The top part of the lip protrudes out a little further than the bottom part. And something too you want to double check is that you don't try to complete the shape of the lip on the right hand side the same as on the left. You might be tempted to you know, draw the lip. Let's see, I'm going to grab a fresh piece of paper. You might be tempted to draw the lip like this and, you know, complete it on the right hand side so that it looks the same. But you want to resist that temptation because we're seeing her face at a three quarters angle. So we can't see that right side of the lip like we can the left. It's foreshortened. It's, it's facing away from us. So it's not going to look the same on the right as it does on the left. So really, you will always want to be looking at your reference photo um, at least 50% of the time and just draw what you see, not uh, what you think you see. So half the battle in drawing realistically and, and painting realistically is really looking and observing um, your reference photo or from life if you're painting or drawing from life and accurately just drawing the shapes that you see and just get rid of the symbolic idea of what you think lips look like or what eyes look like just draw the forms that you see all right uh, let's go back to her eyes and put in a little more detail again the eyes are at a three-quarters angle so we're not seeing <clears throat> the eye is not going to be looking like like this, like we might typically think of an eye. You know, it's not going to look like that um, because we can't see the whole thing. And that's an, that's an oversimplification of what the eye looks like anyway, what people think eyes look like, the way we've drawn them as children. But truly, her eye um, has a different kind of a, a shape to it. And now we're kind of moving out of the... Um, anatomical sense and getting into more of the individual likeness of making it look like her. And some people have eyes that have very prominent eyelids, you know, very prominent eyelids. You might have the eye like this. And there's your tear duct. You know, your eyebrow up here, however that might look. And they have very, very prominent eyelids. They've got that you know, strong shape above. She doesn't really have that. She, her, her eyelid is very um, ambiguous. There's just a slight form above it where you can see a little bit of a divot there, but her eyelids are much closer um, to the actual bottom edge of her eyelashes. Now that part is very prominent. We do want to portray the thickness of her eyelashes and eyeliner and that form and uh, capture the beauty of her face. So we're going to do that. Okay, and I'm just gonna sharpen my pencil again. And now we want to show the iris and that's going to be important again the iris is at an angle because she's looking away from us we're not seeing that iris as a round ball but rather an oval because it's foreshortened all right so it's it's really more compressed so we have this round form this oval we've got a little bit of a triangular shape here Got the bottom edge. You do want to kind of show some of those eyelashes a little bit. And then put a little bit of the pupil in there. We're just going to suggest some of the shading. And now it's imperative that I get the distance right on the eyebrow and just make sure I have this accurate here. 
So I, I have our eyebrows coming down a little too low. I'm going to have to raise them up because the distance between the eyebrows and the eye is very, very important for capturing an accurate likeness. And I want to make sure that the eye comes out about as far as it should. This angle here is a little bit straighter. And we're just going to make sure, double check that we have the shape accurate. see some of her eyelashes kind of going downward a bit but I don't want to over detail it it's really good to keep your colored pencil sharp now let's get the shape of her other eye as you're sketching you might wonder you know can you just use graphite pencil and not use colored pencil you can I found that colored pencil tends to erase a little bit easier on a surface with gesso and matte medium. And it doesn't smear as much either as you're drawing. So I, I like colored pencil better. All right, and we're going to just get the form of her eye. Now the iris, that round part of the eye, just hugs along the edge of this vertical grid line. And I'm just putting in the suggestion of her pupil with a simplified form and I'm trying to see the actual shading within the eye and capture that. And then we have this line representing the edge of her eye. So again, we can't see that edge of her eye, it's, it's going to be more of a form like this. Okay, rather than seeing the point on the other side, it's going to be more rounded and you're going to see that flat side on the other side because it's in perspective. So this part is, is foreshortened here. There's a little bit of a curvature. And I'm just going to fill in the form of her eyebrows a little bit. Oh, I do need to taper them. They're just a little thick. And we just fill it in a little bit. So when you have it filled in like this and shaded in, it gives you a better sense visually if you're capturing the likeness because you can see the visual weight of the dark values of the eyebrows. So I found it's good to kind of fill in the forms a little bit. Let's move down to the mouth and just capture her teeth. We can only see really two, the two teeth right now, the way her mouth is opened. And we want to get the midpoint captured accurately. So that break in the teeth, we want to put that in the right spot. I think it's something like that. There's a darker part on the right hand side and you can see maybe a little bit of the bottom teeth just suggested with a lighter value and then it's darker on that side. We can actually shade in a little bit here to help capture the form. It's not necessary to put in every little wrinkle in detail, but just some of the supporting details can help so we know you know that we're capturing everything accurately that bottom part of her eye could come down a little bit more on the top so I'm just gonna erase right here and if you just have an eraser like this this will also do the job because it has some nice corners on it so I'm just gonna bring that down a little lower get that angle more accurate.
Make sure I have the bottom edge of the eye where it should be. And then the eyelashes do kind of protrude out past the edge of her face. All right, so now let's uh, take a look at her hair and get a little more architecture of the hair in here. And we'll do some refining details, double check everything, and then we'll call it done. So we've got this form of her hair, this highlight right here flowing from the main mass and we want to make sure we've got that delineated basically flows down and curves like this there's a break right there where we have another strand so this we can make a little bit lighter And we want the bottom part to, it looks like it uh, really should come out to about there if we want to get this accurate. And then there is a strand that flows to about here. Just want to make sure I have everything in the right place. Here it's not absolutely critical for, it really has nothing to do with the likeness here. I mean a little bit, but it's more for the sake of realism to put the hair in the right place. The eyes are the most important feature in the face, and probably next the mouth, and then the nose and the rest of the structure of the face comes into play as well. But for the hair, you just want to get the general idea. So we're just basically wanting to get these forms in here, showing the, the highlighted areas and the overall difference between these shapes. So we have kind of a straight line here. There'll be a dark value in there as we paint it in. and then it'll come in just like that. This area is going to curve down and we're going to have another area flowing in like this. Let's just make sure we have everything placed here where it should be. I think this actually could come down a little bit more. So this is going to hit the top knuckle. Yeah, this actually should come down more. Just erase that. Yeah, it's sometimes a little easy to get lost where you're supposed to be on this, especially with hair because it's a little more ambiguous. But we've got this form right here flowing down by her knuckle. We have that form. We have this line, and I'm just trying to get the exact placement of this line. Yeah, I think that's actually pretty close. I 
This could come out a little further though, right there. And that'll, that'll be good. That'll be good. Okay, let's get these strands down here. So we have one strand flowing here. We've got this main strand right there. Another one that comes into about here. And then this main mass of hair, which is very important. I want to do a little bit of refining on her hand and just make sure I have this tendon going to the right place. Let's put in a couple of lines up here to give her the part of her hair a little more shape. So we've got, let's see, um, this main form here, we have another little line right there. And then there's still another line right here that's a little farther apart. So you want to make sure you don't have these lines all evenly spaced. You're going to have to fight that temptation. To, to You're going to want to space them all evenly apart, but this these two lines are a little closer together. This one up here is a little farther apart than the other. And we just have a few lines here. You can just loosely suggest them and you don't have to get in everything. Put a little divot right there for that part and then let's get this area here, this is a dominant shape that's very important to capture. And that would be this shadow part of her hair right there. That's going to come out to about here and then it gets skinnier. So it's thicker up here, it gets skinnier as we get down to this other side. There's a little bit of the hair that actually curves in like that flows out. The main mass of it is right here. There's a little bit of a cave here, so to speak. So that we're going to fill in. Just erase that. And we want to make sure we have her cheek tapered appropriately. It, it does come out just a little bit right here. And she has a little nose ring right up there. We'll put that in. You can leave it out if you want. That's a personal thing. I'm just going to put it in because it's there. It's not very obtrusive. Um, I'm just going to race up there. Okay, and let's fill in some of these areas. It's just good to fill them in with a little bit of shading just to suggest that when we paint it, this will all be glazed in and that's going to be kind of our first level of glaze. I'm going to also shade in the main area where the values shift. You have you know, the darker part of her head here, the lighter part, the illuminated side, we want to put in that shaded part on the left hand side and really plot out where it starts to turn, where, where we have a turning of the form. And I'm just going to use the side of my pencil here to just loosely suggest that, block that in without getting too overly crazy about it doesn't have to, this does not have to look like a finished drawing, it should just look more like a sketch. I'm going to fill this in, I'm going to use more of the tip of the pencil here. And then we 
want to just refine the fingers a little bit. And now let's fill in this area down here. This should be in shadow. Get a little bit of the curvature of the hair right there. That'll be good. And just refine the edge of her hair on the other side. Now let's just double check and make sure that we have the pupil where it should be. It should be coming out a little closer to this grid line. find the edge of the eye. We just have a little bit of the top part of her lid showing there on this other eye. Find that ever so slightly. And then we're going to fill in that little area on the right hand side, put in a couple little textural markings for her hair. I'll just suggest her collarbone ever so slightly right here and right here so that follows at an angle like that and it's just a little rounded. I'm using a very light, light approach. I don't want to make it really hard to paint over. And then we'll put in just a slight bit of texture for her sweater which flows in right here at this point. And a couple of little textural areas for this right hand side of her sweater. I want to get the skinny little lines in there. So that's showing the weave of the sweater. And now you can see it. All right, so I'm just sketching this in right here. You can see her sweater. And we have a little bit of the angle of her uh, collarbone there. And so for the sweater, we want to make sure we can see the weave of it. However you, or I should say the way it's knitted. So I'm just putting in some skinny little lines following that same contour to suggest the edge of the form. But keep in mind that the lines will be farther apart in the middle and then closer together on the right hand side because they are more foreshortened over there. And I'm just going to decide where, where the edge will be because we do have the light source to keep in mind. And so I wanna basically simplify it. I'm gonna say this whole area here will be dark. We'll have one little light area right here. 
and then this whole area here is going to be dark. Now this makes it so much easier than when you're doing your painting just to basically think of this in term of in terms of chiaroscuro, you know, um, that you have one level of darkness and lightness to achieve initially. Now you're going to add more depth and complexity as you go along, but just to make it easy on yourself, you just want to sketch it like that so that you have, you know, these forms. You have one area that's light, one area that's dark, and that's it. So then it'll be really easy to block this in when, when we paint. Just fill this in right there. And there we go. Just going to add a few final touches to this and we'll call it done. Let's just get a little more detail for that philtrum on her lip. Show the little bit of the shading right there where that should go. bit of the markings of her architecture of her lip and I'll just lightly portray the form of her nose here just the nasal bone structure just using some very light markings And just the slightest bit of shading showing the form of her cheekbones, which I would plot out right about here. This is where the value turns, and that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing where the, as I step back, the overall lighting structure where it seems to shift the quickest, and that's where I see it shifting, is right there. So I'm going to just put in a little bit of very, very light shading right there to suggest that change in value. Here it's a little bit darker, I'm just going to show the bottom edge of the underside of her eye, just shaded. Let's even put that slight wrinkle under her eye as well on this side, on the left side. This little shading on the interior of her eye to show the the way that's going to be glazed. And there's that slight, slight wrinkle above. And we don't want to miss this little part of her cheek behind the fingers. That'll be important to get, and I'm just going to fill that area in. I'm going to put in a little shading under her neck, or under her chin rather, on her neck. shading underneath the hair here so we know what's what. <laughs> Just 
just fill in on her nostrils ever so slightly the form a little more accurately. And I'm just going to show the architecture of the shading under her lip. There's just a slight crease under there. And this little bit of shading on her chin. And let's just show the form of her neck, even though it's a very, very soft, out of focus shape. I just want to darken right here so we can see where her neck really begins and ends. I think the background is so ambiguous that I'm not sure if I want it. Well, I might block in a couple of forms here. Yeah, we'll just, we'll block in this form right here for the top. And let's see where that falls. So it goes right above her eye area. I'll just loosely block that shape in, but it's not a huge thing that you don't have to have it perfect. So I'm just going to really keep it super loose. Just have a couple of benchmarks, put one on this side. That's probably enough. Okay, I'm just going to make a little, just a bit of a refining on that eye, make sure it comes out far enough, not too far. shading right there on that eye. And then let's get a little bit of the tilt of her nose on the bottom. going to erase the top of her nose ever so slightly just to make it a little bit lighter. All right, and I think I'm going to call this sketch done. All right, so there we're at. We have the sketch finished. And, um, you know, at this point, you should be able to step back, look at your sketch, and uh, you see the likeness, see the anatomy um, looking accurate. It might not be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be accurate. As long as you have the eyes and the nose and the mouth uh, roughly where they should be, um, you should end up with a fantastic portrait. Um, but just take a step back, look at it, see if anything needs to be adjusted. Take the time you need to make some adjustments, but uh, don't go overboard with it. Just try to get everything in its proper place. I'll be happy to help you. Other artists in our group will be happy to help you further um, if you need any help with this process. 
but uh, you definitely can do this. Um, I, I, on purpose, I chose an image that was fairly simple in terms of not having too much complexity, having a large face within the image um, so that it would be something that you'd be able to do, but challenging enough, you know, especially with the hand um, that even seasoned portrait artists would find this to be a worthy painting uh, to, to, to paint and to accelerate their skills, take them to a higher level. Anyway, you're going to be able to do this well. I'm looking forward to seeing your sketch and helping you with it, seeing your portrait develop. And I'm going to do one, one bonus lesson for you. I was going to stop off here at the sketching stage um, and then segue into uh, realistic acrylic portrait school for the rest of the lessons. But I'm going to do one more lesson for you where I show you how to seal the sketch in properly um, and also uh, white out the grid lines as well. Uh, that's a very important part of the process. I'm going to do that bonus lesson for you coming up here next. And then I look forward to helping you further in the school. Um, so anyway, thank you so much for uh, following along in the challenge. I look forward to seeing your portrait. God bless, and we'll see you in the next lesson.